All right. Well, happy Monday. It's Jesse and I. We are back. Um, we've got Jesse at home. I'm at home, and she's painting. We were just talking the most adorable Valentine's Day heart painting. So, again, you know the drill. If you guys have any questions, we're here to help. Uh, Jesse um, is going to be walking you through in just about an hour. Classes will be available. But again, if you have any questions, just let us know and we'll try to answer them for you. So, you guys enjoy. Yeah. Hey, guys. Uh, I'm really excited. It's been a I guess I was here a couple weeks ago on the Monday night. Hey, everybody. Um, but I'm excited to be back. I'm excited to see you guys. I'm looking at the chat now. Hey, everybody. Um, so like Kira said, we're painting this really cute Candy Hearts painting. So just in time for oops, just in time for Valentine's Day. It's a really fun, sweet little one. I'm going to show you some fun um, taping off techniques and things like that to make a cute background. Um, and then I did also want to mention that I had a template that did not make it up onto the event listing. So we put it up in the chat. I think Jimena pinned it. So if you guys can print it out, awesome. If not, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make your own template since you guys probably did not get a chance to um, grab that. So no worries at all. <clears throat> I'm let you know what supplies we'll be using for the class. So this here is an eight by 10 canvas, um, just a standard eight by 10. I've got my folk art acrylic paints as always. So we will be using pure orange. Um, I've got violet pansy, lime green, lipstick red, baby pink, wicker white, daffodil yellow, and true blue. So as you can see, I'm going to be showing you guys a lot of pastel mixing, which is fun. So I'm just going to kind of show you how you can take really any bright, vibrant color um, and make it into a pastel color, which is really fun. So you don't have to buy all these new paints if you want to do something fun and sweet and kind of different for Valentine's Day or Easter or, um, or anything like that. I also have my brushes. So I've got kind of a jumble of brushes here, but I listed the um, the seven piece variety set, the Craft Smart variety set. So I won't be using any brushes that aren't in that set. So as we go, I'll tell you which brush I'm using at a time, but that's the set that was listed. And I also listed some um, painter's tape. So if you have like stencil tape, washi tape even works really well for this. This is just like some regular blue painter's tape and that's what we'll be using to make these stripes. Um, if you guys do have scissors and a pencil, um, that would be for the template. I recommend go ahead and grab those now. I hope you do, because that's what we'll be using to make our template. If you don't, um, don't stress out. We can just draw the template ourselves. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I also have my palette paper here for mixing my paint, some paper towels and some water for cleaning my brushes. And then I also have a hair dryer because we'll be doing a good bit of layering for this painting, as you can see here in the background with our colors on top. So we'll be drawing in between layers. So go ahead and grab your hair dryer like we usually use for our Monday night classes. And we have no questions about supplies. We can go ahead and get started. Yeah, we're good. Everyone just getting in and saying hi. Awesome. Hey, guys. Okay, cool. <laughs> so we're going to start by mixing some colors. Um, so like I said, we can get some of these pastels going for our background. I'm going to pull this in so you can see a little better. We're going to start by mixing this pretty pastel yellow color. And as I'm sure you guys all know or can assume, um, to get most pastel colors, you're just going to mix that true color with white and that's how you'll get a pastel. So I've got my daffodil yellow there or sunny yellow. Um, and then I've also got my wicker white here. So typically when you're mixing pastel colors, um, you don't need a lot of the color. You need mostly white to get that really pale, pale color. So I'll show you what I mean. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit of my yellow here. So not a ton, we're gonna start with a little bit at a time and I'm gonna start mixing that into my white. You can always add more, but you can never take it out. So just keep that in mind. So I'm gonna get a nice pale yellow for this Candy Hearts painting. And I wanted a little more yellow than that. So I'm just gonna wipe it off and I'm gonna grab a little more. Like I said, just doing a little bit as we go, because again, we can always add more, but we can't take it out. So just a little bit at a time, especially so we don't waste any paint too. Okay, cool. So I like that yellow. That's a nice, pretty pale yellow. So now what we're going to do, <clears throat> we're not going to tape it off just yet. This is going to kind of spare us from having to do lots of like taping on each other. We're going to paint the yellow, then tape, then paint the green, then tape, then blue, tape, pink, tape. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to start all the way on the right here. And I'm going to start painting the edge yellow. And I'm going to go a couple of an inches about as I'm going to eyeball it, but I'm going to go as at least as far as this one goes. So I'm gonna be a little bit further because that's where we'll tape it off. So 
I'm gonna start painting on the edge and it doesn't, you don't have to have a straight line. Don't worry, we're just getting the color down and then we'll tape it. And you can also do the edges too, as you're going. Just put the colors that you're using. So you can see I've got, I've got a little bit further just to better safe than sorry. Okay, and this see. is a we really easy way. I think a lot of people kind of get confused when they're trying to um, like use tape for a painting, but butt the colors up against each other. It gets kind of confusing as like where you put the tape and what order you put the colors in and things like that. So this is going to kind of help you guys understand that a little bit. I'm going to rinse my brush off and then we're going to dry this with our hair dryer. So it only takes one coat because we're using our um, super opaque folk art acrylic paint. So only one coat for this. Okay, so again, like I said, I'm gonna put, um, use my hair dryer now to dry it completely because we'll be putting tape on it. So you want it to be really, really dry. So I'm gonna check to see if that's nice and dry. And it is nice and dry. So like I said, since sometimes I don't really mind if it's like super dry as I'm going just enough to kind of put the next coat on. But since we're gonna be taping, I do wanna make sure it is super duper dry. And if you don't have a hair dryer, guys, don't worry about it. Keep in mind, all these Michaels classes are recorded. So you can watch along with me and ask questions and see how we do it. And then you can come back when the um, recording is posted in 40, uh, 24 to 48 hours. And you can watch it and you know, bring all the supplies you need and um, rewind and fast forward and pause as you need. Okay, so I've got a piece of tape here. So now is where we're gonna start adding these stripes. So I'm gonna use, my, since it's a small canvas, if it was anything bigger, I might mark it off and try to measure it to get my lines perfectly straight. But since it's a small canvas, as long as your tape looks straight, it's kind of gonna be hard to make it wonky. So we're gonna eyeball it. We want it to be a couple of inches from the edge. You just wanna make sure there's no white showing. That's why we went a little bit over. Oops, sorry, I, I just got that backwards, guys. You want the tape to be covering where the yellow is going to stay, of course. So about this far from the edge, and probably about mm, half an inch, three quarters of an inch from the edge. And I'm just eyeballing it. And then keep in mind, this is gonna be our yellow. What's under the tape and what's showing is our yellow. And then this part's gonna be our green. So your tape should be about where mine is. About an inch from the edge, half inch from the edge. About a half an inch or three quarters of an inch from the edge. Okay. okay, so that's where you want our tape to be. And I'm just pressing it down on this side because I want a nice flush um, edge to make sure none of my paint escapes underneath. And then once, I'll give you guys just a second to get that tape down and then we're gonna start mixing our pastel green color. Yeah, so just there were some questions in the chat. I think I got them all, but someone was asking the difference. You know, some I think when people ask questions, a lot of people may have the same questions. So I want to share them yeah. while they're painting. So someone was asking what the difference between um, wicker white and titanium white was. So I said uh, wicker white's like a warmer white, like a creamier, mm -hmm. warmer white, and mm -hmm. uh, titanium is a cooler white. Both yeah, the same sure. coverage, but just one Absolutely. is a little bit warmer and one's cooler. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and then someone was asking if um, there was an alternative for the green. So somebody has, I think, new leaf green. So any kind yeah, of like great. bright green, you can always add yellow if you want to make it more kind of like that lime color. Definitely. And since we're making a pastel green, even if you had like a grass green, like a classic green, that should be okay too, because we're going to be lightening it. So yours might not be as 
like Kira said, as warm of a green, it might be a little bit cooler of a green, but you'll still get a nice pastel green. It just might be a little mintier, but that'll be yep. pretty for this painting too. Yep. And then someone's asking just the tape. So um, yeah. you go ahead, Jesse, if you, they want to know like the positioning of it. Okay. Yeah. So I just grabbed a piece of tape, just long enough to cover my, to go stretch across my canvas. And then what's really helpful is to look here. As like I said, if it was a bigger canvas, we might get rulers and stuff and try to mark it out and be exact, but it's really not a very big canvas. So just want to make sure this edge looks even. It doesn't really matter, you know, if, if you're not perfectly distanced from the edge, you just want to make sure this area is even. So like, what, for example, this looks the same width as this, then you know your tape is straight. So your tape isn't going to be crooked no matter what. You, it's, you have a chance of it being that way or that way. But if this area and this area look the same, then chances are it's going to be good. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to start mixing our pastel green. My dog was just trying to crawl on my lap and he's 70 pounds and not a lap dog. Oh, Duke is a lap dog. That, I was yes, like, shake <laughs> a 70 pound <laughs> dog off of the chair. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so I just grabbed some of my um, lime green, guys. This is the bright green. Like I said, if you have a different green, that is okay. And then we want some more wicker white. We're going to mix our white just like we did with our yellow to get a nice pastel green color. So the same thing, we want mostly white. We're gonna add a little bit of green at a time. And I didn't think I mentioned this. This is a one inch flat brush, guys. So a little bit of green at a time with our white. So someone's asking about the tape. So if you just have regular masking tape, you can use that. But if you're worried about it being too sticky, you can always take your tape and like, this is gonna sound silly, but like put it on your shirt or your pants and get some of the stick off. Does that make sense? Like you're almost yeah. picking up a little bit of the lint um, and you can totally use that, but masking tape should work fine. Um, we just always yeah. use the low tack tape um, yeah. and you don't have to use tape. If you, someone was asking if you could draw your lines and paint them in, um, totally. it just, it's a really easy way to do it. For sure. Yeah. You can definitely draw your lines. If you have a nice steady hand, by all means, you can paint your lines in. Like I said, washi tape works really well if you've got that. Um, but yeah, whatever stencil tape is awesome for this kind of thing too. Whatever tape you have laying around that you use for your crafting should be fine. Okay, so we have this nice pale green color here. So we're gonna do the same thing with the yellow, but we're gonna use this edge as our guide and we're gonna paint a couple of inches to the left of that. And we're, you can kind of see how we're gonna continue doing this all across our painting. So I'm gonna start painting this green. You can see, since we're using our full guard acrylic paints, it has really good coverage. So it's not gonna take more than one coat for any of our colors, which is really nice. And for this one, you wanna kind of eyeball it, keeping in mind we have four colors in our final painting. So we should be going up to at least the halfway mark. And you don't have to make your stripes perfectly, even if you don't want to, you can make them all different widths. That's kind of cute too. It's kind of like pop arty. Um, but I should make sure I, I go at least to the halfway. Again, I'm just eyeballing it. So don't stress about it. If you've got a ruler and you want to measure it by all means, but I definitely am not. And just a nice even coat of that green. And you don't want it to be too thick because you want it to dry really fast since we're trying to paint this in just about an hour. So once you've got your green down, we're gonna go ahead and grab our hair dryer and dry it. <sighs> Okay, so that's pretty dry. So now what we're gonna do, I always like to remove my tape when I'm painting and masking off like this um, as soon as I can. The longer you wait and leave your tape down, the more likely it's gonna be to pull the paint up beneath it. So I like to do it, like I said, as soon as I can. Um, another little tip for keeping your paint from peeling up, a lot of people wanna just pull it right up. And that's one way to do it. But if you pull it so that you are 
um, parallel with your canvas, you're much less likely to peel the paint up. If you just pull it straight up, can you see what I'm doing? If you pull it straight up, you're more likely to pull that paint off. So if you pull it at an angle, so you're parallel with your surface, you're way less likely to pull that tape off underneath. So now we have that nice clean line. You can kind of get an idea of how we're gonna continue with these stripes. So now I'm gonna grab some more tape. We're gonna do that a couple more times for our two other pastel colors. So like I said, keep in mind, this one, we're gonna look at our right edge. We kind of gonna eyeball it. We want it to be about center. So again, I'm just eyeballing it, but we're looking at this again. Oops, I did it wrong again. We want the left side to be about center. I keep getting myself backwards. So just like we did with the yellow, I'm gonna look there and I wanna make sure that area of green and that area of green look the same. And that's how I know it's gonna be um, uh, straight up and down. It's gonna be perpendicular with my canvas. It's not gonna be crooked. So that width and that width, I'm just eyeballing it, look about the same to me. And that's how I know it's straight. So the left edge is the important edge again, just like with our yellow. So I'm gonna put that down. And it's always good too, when you're doing taping projects like this to kind of, you know, keep your, mix a little more than you need. So if you need to go back and touch up, it's not a big deal. So I'm gonna press that down with my finger. And now we're gonna mix our pretty blue color that we have here. Try to leave, I'll move this out when we stop doing so much mixing. You can kind of see it there though, there we go. Um, okay, so I'm gonna grab some of my true blue. This is of course a much darker color than we've used so far. So I just need a little bit, you hardly need any. And then of course, we're gonna put our wicker white or whichever white you have. And we're gonna use our brush and we're gonna mix that up. Again, just a little bit of blue because this is a dark color. So a little bit will go a long way. Okay, so we're getting a nice light blue color here. All righty. So this is just perfect. This is just the color I want. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna start painting to the left of our tape, just like we've been doing, and you can paint the edges too. And we're gonna go a couple of inches. Oops, I got some blue on there. A couple of inches that way. We're gonna kind of just eyeball it. It's good to go a little bit further than you need, just better safe than sorry. With that nice opaque blue pastel color. And a little tip too, um, whenever you add white to a color, it tends to make it more opaque. Of course it makes it lighter, we all know that. That's how we're making it, you know, using it for our pastel colors. But when it, white is a very opaque color. And what I mean by opaque is that it's not transparent at all. It's got full, full coverage. So whenever you add white to a color, it automatically makes that color a little bit more opaque. So that's why we're getting such good coverage. We get good coverage anyway, because it's folk art, but this is giving us like exceptionally good coverage because we're adding white to every single one of our, um, our colors. So I'm gonna remove my tape, just like I said, and I'm gonna do it really close to my surface so I don't get any tape or any paint pulled up. And now we are gonna dry and we're almost done with our backgrounds. Let's see, that should be pretty dry. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so now we're going on to our last stripe, which is our pink. 
So we just want to make sure. So this is our kind of our center that we eyeballed. We should make sure that we cut this space pretty evenly so that our stripes look pretty even. I'm going to grab a piece of tape. And we're going to go on the blue and we're going to keep in mind the left side, left, the left edge of our tape. That's going to be where our pink goes. And that looks about right. So I want to make sure that this area and this area look about the same. So that's, this is the line that's important. And I'm going to press that down. And again, keeping in mind that if this width and this width look the same, then you know that your tape is pretty straight. And this is the easiest one because we don't even mix it. <laughs> in this um, list of colors, our baby pink is the perfect pastel pink. So this one we're just gonna use straight out of the bottle, which is nice and easy. I put a little baby pink on my palette and we'll do the same thing to the left of the tape that we've been doing the whole time. Okay. Paint our baby pink right in there. So someone's asking how you mix the pink. The pink is actually baby pink and it's right out of the bottle. Yep, this one, we, got, we left out. We had a nice pastel pink color. We did not have to mix it. So um, just straight out of the bottle. That's just the regular baby pink color. But if you don't have pink, um, you can, in the supply list was lipstick red. You can continue what we've been doing with all our colors by mixing a little bit of lipstick red into your wicker white or whichever white you have. And you'll get a nice soft pink color. So if you don't have pink, a little bit of red and white will do the trick. Okay, so I'm gonna pull my tape off. Okay, you can see here, there must've been a little bit of wet paint under there because my blue got pulled up a little with the tape, which is why I said it's always good to keep a little bit of leftover on your palette so we can just touch that up nice and easy. No biggie. And I got a little bit of blue on my yellow over here. So I'm just going to do the same thing while I'm, while I'm touching up, I might as well. Perfect. Easy peasy. And now we are going to dry our whole canvas before we start painting our heart. So you can see how super easy that was to do a really fun stripe effect. Um, of course, it would be much easier if we kind of did like all one color and then did a few stripes and a second color. But since I love the idea of these um, four blocks of color, like I said, almost like kind of like pop art, it reminds me of, um, this is a really simple way to do it without having to like butt up tape against each other and like it gets kind of hairy. So um, you can use this technique for signs. If you guys are into sign making, lots of different tech, uh, projects you can use this technique for. Someone is asking what happens if your paintbrush, like the bristles on your brush are getting into your paint? Yeah, that's a great question. That is really a big pain in the butt. Um, so what I like to do if that ever happens to me, I'm using kind of like an inexpensive or like more affordable paintbrush. I like to let my entire painting dry. And then typically what you can do once the um, bristles of your paintbrush have dried into your paint, you can usually just wipe them away. If you try to peel them up when they're wet, you of course could do that, but it just gets messy and you end up messing up, you know, the coverage you've got, or you have to go back and repaint it. So I just let it dry and then you can usually just kind of sweep them off once everything is dry. But another tip, if you just got a brand new pack of brushes, that's just something that happens with brushes, the bristles fall out. So if say this br brush was brand new, I got out of the pack, I like to go like this on my hand a little and that will kind of reveal any of the loose bristles. So I'll rub it around on my hand and it kind of, like I said, loosens if there's any loose bristles in there to kind of avoid that um, problem. Cause that is something that can happen with brand new brushes. So hopefully that works for you. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna dry my painting.
No, Duke had to go upstairs. Someone was asking if you guys get to see my puppy. You guys, 70 pound lab dog. I was like, uh uh. Duke is just about the sweetest. He would be sitting right here with me, like, you've ever seen. He is the sweetest, sweetest, biggest puppy dog. He is a monster. He's good, though. (laughs) He's such a good boy. I sent him to bed with my other son. (laughs) (laughs) That was smart. Okay, so I'm going to move my palette back over so you can kind of see the finished painting a little more. I just want you guys to be able to see all that color mixing I was doing, Um, but I've got room here enough so you guys can see it. I want you to see both of the paintings instead. Okay, so here's where um, we have kind of, I don't want to say issue because it's not an issue. It's a really easy fix, but the pattern did not get up. So it is in the chat. Jimena posted it in the chat for us. So if you can, you know, grab somebody in your household to print it for you. Awesome. But if not, I'm going to show you how you can make your own. So it's really not a big deal. It doesn't matter what your heart looks like. It, you know, it doesn't matter if your heart is perfect or the right shape. What matters is that A, your heart is symmetrical. So it's going to look neat if it's symmetrical. And B, that both of the hearts on your painting look the same. So like they came from the same candy heart package, whichever size, whichever size or shape hearts you have. So there's the pattern again. Mena just posted it. Thanks, Mena. So I have a little printout of my supply list here just to remind myself. So I'm going to use this um, as a scrap piece of paper. So if you guys are going to go ahead and make the template with me, grab a scrap piece of paper, um, a pencil and some scissors, like I mentioned, and I'll show you an easy way to do it yourself if you cannot print that one. If you can print it, go ahead and cut it out. That's great. If not, do not stress. Okay. So I've got my plain printer paper here. I'm gonna fold it in half right down the middle. And the heart in the final painting is about, mm, give or take about the size of my palm, a little, including my thumb, a little bit bigger maybe. It's not definitely not my full hand but my whole palm fits on it. So that just will hopefully give you guys kind of an idea of how big this heart should be to fit onto our eight by 10 um, canvas. So I've got my paper folded in half here on the fold, which is important, not on the open part, but on the fold, we're going to draw half of a heart. So I like to make it, you know, this is not how I would typically draw a heart, but it's kind of like how I think of a candy heart, a little more rounded, like a little like fluffier looking almost. Um, but so we're gonna try to draw this to the best of our ability, half of it. So like I said, a little more rounded of a heart. If you guys can't really see that, I'll make it darker. Um, but whenever I'm drawing a heart or whenever I'm drawing anything really, I, I recommended this in a painting class recently. If you try to like go like this, and kind of sketch out a heart and make it perfect, your line's gonna be wonky and it's not gonna be smooth. If you just do it in one big stroke, you're much more likely to get a nice smooth line. So if you try to go slow and get it perfect, you're not gonna get it perfect. If you do a one big motion, just really quick, you're gonna get a nice smooth line. So once you've done that, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut it out. We're going to cut through both sides. This is kind of like a old school paper Valentine's Day style. Paper hearts. We're going to cut through both papers. We're going to open it up and we're going to have a nice heart shape. So like I said, if your heart is wider than mine or taller than mine or skinnier than mine, you know, more narrow. It doesn't really matter. It's about, well, I did a pretty good job actually. I bought that. Um, it doesn't really matter as long as your hearts on your canvas are the same. And as long as your heart is symmetrical, that's what's gonna make your canvas look neat. It may not look exactly like mine, but it will look neat and uniform, which is really the key. Okay, so does everybody do okay with their heart, heart making? Hopefully I'll give you guys a second because I know that was kind of sprung on you. Everybody's talking about dogs. <laughs> okay, well, I don't want any more heart questions if you guys have all been talking about dogs this whole time. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. If you guys have questions, make sure to put it in the chat because I don't want you to get behind because of this this heart thing. <laughs> just being honest. I feel like I need to bring Gus in here. Some, I, uh, oh, gosh. You I quarantined the story him into the spare room. He's, uh, uh, he used to attend a paint night. 
Yes, I actually met Gus at a paint night. I was at a Michael's, I was teaching a Michael's paint night and Kira was there. She was moderating. And one of our coworkers, John was, um, was fostering a little tiny puppy and he brought him with him because he didn't want to leave him home alone. And now I have a dog. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> oh, Cricket says she remembers. He sat. Oh yeah. Lap. Yeah. We yeah. talked about it. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Oh, yep, he's big now. He's not little anymore. Oh, hi, Cricket. I haven't seen you in forever. Hello. Okay, cool. Um, so hopefully you guys are able to get your heart. Like I said, if it doesn't look exactly like mine, it doesn't matter. As long as it's symmetrical, which it should be if you did it that way. And as long as you use the same template for both your hearts, you should be good to go. Okay, so now I'm going to grab my pencil and we're going to start tracing our template onto our um, canvas here. So we have them kind of overlapping, as you can see. So we're going to do it the back one first. So he's kind of tilted to the right and he's a little bit higher. So I'm going to just go around and outline this heart. Okay, so we've got our one heart. I know it's hard for you guys to see. I'll hold it up, but just a nice pencil line. It doesn't need to be very dark, just dark enough for you to see it, which this is much darker in real life, but there's our pencil line. And this one's going to be kind of layered over him and staggered on the left side more so and tilted to the left. We're going to trace this one. We're going old school heart making here. Super old school. That's Val what I said. Valentine's Day heart making. I know. Sure. Old school Valentine paper cutting. Oh, oh yes, Winston's mom sure. said she's dedicating this to her puppy. Oh, um, I know. I love that. Okay. All right. So I've got my two heart outlines traced there on my canvas. Can you guys see those? I know it's hard to see on camera. And now what we want to do is. Of course, our candy hearts, we can just make them flat hearts if you wanted to. But of course, we want these to look like candy hearts. So candy hearts are three-dimensional. You know, they're thicker, they're not flat. So that's why we have this little dimensional area that we're gonna add to our hearts to make it look like real candy hearts. So to do that, super easy to do. We're gonna do a little line about a half inch going down from the bottom point of each heart. Let me see if I can outline this a little bit darker so you guys can see it better. You don't have to outline yours dark, just so I just want you guys to be able to see mine. Okay, so you can see the bottom there a little wetter. So I'm gonna do a little mark about half an inch coming down from that point, and a little mark about half an inch coming down from that point. So it should look like that. And you can even erase this line where it overlaps if it's gonna confuse you to kind of see like where our hearts are gonna be because that one's in the front. So I'm gonna make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. So I erased that overlapping line because we don't need that. That is going to be behind our, our front heart. So we don't really need to see that. Kind of making a mess, but I just want you guys to be able to see my lines. Okay, cool. All right. So now what we're going to do is we are going to take the left and right sides of our heart and we're connect them down to that point. So we've got our little notch going down about a half an inch. We want to go the left and the right sides of our heart and we're going to draw those down to that point. So one here, just a nice swooping line. And then one here. You wanna make it as symmetrical as you can. Can you guys see that? And the same thing here. So this one's in the back, it's a little, not quite as full, but our line on the right to make it look like it is dimensional. It is a 3D heart. So I'll let you guys all catch up for just a second on that. Should look something like this. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna mix a couple more of these pastel colors and we're gonna start with our orange. I'm just gonna go ahead, it's gonna be just like, while you guys are catching up, it's gonna be just like um, the pastel colors we've already done, mostly white with a little bit of our, our pure orange color. Oops. 
Oops, that's yellow. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm gonna do like I said, a little bit of orange, mostly white. Get that pretty peachy orange color. We're gonna paint that all um, of this back heart area, but we're not gonna paint it on the dimensional part we just drew, just the flat, larger area of the heart. We're just gonna paint that right on. Just like a coloring book, we're gonna fill in that shape. You need a smaller brush if that's more comfortable for you to kind of get into the edges. Or you can use your one inch brush and just use the edge of your bristles as a guide. How's everybody doing out there, Kira? Everybody's good, painting along. Everyone says you're doing such a great job. You're one of their favorite teachers. You make it so easy. Oh, thank you. Lots of Jesse love, which we love. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I love Michael's community classroom. They're so much fun. Okay. You make it easy so for since me. This is looking... Oh, what'd you say? Sorry. You make it easy for me just to sit here. <laughs> well, good. I'm glad. Um, <laughs> okay, cool. So since this is looking, since we're doing going over a color, this is looking a little bit um, transparent. So I'm going to dry this really quick and do a second coat. So if yours is looking more opaque than mine, great. But I just you can see the green coming through. So I'm going to dry it really quick. I'm going to do a quick layer, a uh, second layer of the orange color. Let's see a little more. Just to cover that up a little bit more. All right, so that looks much better already. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do our purple. So just like we've been doing, we're gonna grab some of our violet pansy and put it on our palette. You can't really see what I'm doing, but there we go. Our violet pansy, put it on our palette. And then we want to mix mostly white with a little bit of purple. So we get this nice pastel purple color. So someone's asking, could you do white under the orange instead of two oranges, two layers of orange? Yeah, you could. Um, that kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier. Whenever you add, like white is a very opaque color. So whenever you go and add white <clears> to a color, it makes it more opaque. And that's why that's a great idea to use white as a base coat because it will cover up what is whatever's beneath it and you can put a fresh color on top. So yeah, either way you could do a coat of white and then orange over it or just two coats of your orange. Either way will work. 
Okay, so we're the same thing with our little pale purple color here we just mixed. Oh, that's a little bit light. I'm gonna add a little more purple to it. There we go, that's better. I'm gonna cover up, I'm gonna paint all in this big heart area. Again, we're gonna ignore the dimensional area for now. Go right to the orange. And you can see the purple covers better than the orange. And the reason that is, is because um, some colors just in the rainbow are more transparent than others. Like we said, white, of course, is very opaque. Um, but like warmer colors oftentimes are more transparent, like your yellows and your reds, and therefore your oranges can be more transparent. So that's why even adding the white to it didn't make it quite as opaque as you wanted to. Um, but purple is a little bit more opaque as well. So that's why it covered up really well without having to do a second coat. Oh, my table keeps shaking. I tightened it before this too. But <laughs> All right. Try not to nudge it. Okay. Um, so once you have that done, we are going to go in and fill in these dimensional parts. And in order to make them look more dimensional, um, it would be almost like they're in shadow a little bit, we want them to be a little bit darker. Um, so we are going to just use the colors straight out of the bottle for this. So pure orange will be this little area and then our violet pansy will be this area. And make sure it, it gets a little hairy down here where we have the overlapping. So make sure if it helps you to kind of erase some of those extra lines you don't need, um, you do that before you go start trying to add the color because sometimes you can get confused. I'm gonna start with my orange, I guess. I'm gonna grab a smaller brush for this. So I'll grab my number eight flat, just since it's a tiny area. Someone wants to know if they should dry the purple. Um, you can. We probably will end up doing that before we start painting our letters on, um, but you don't need to do it right now. You can just kind of let it air dry for the time being, and then if we need to, we'll go back and dry it. Don't worry about adding, you know, the borders and stuff. That will be our very last step after we paint our letters in is adding that really fun red border to kind of make everything pop. So we're just painting in the large areas for now. So I did my orange and now I'm just gonna go straight in with my pure purple.
Okay. So now we have our purple painted in. And now if you feel like it's still pretty wet, which mine definitely is, you can go ahead and dry it. So I'm gonna go ahead and dry mine now with my hair dryer. So I'm nice and dry. But you guys, just a minute to catch up and to um, make sure your paintings are nice and dry. I'm going to go ahead and use this time. I've got some pencil lines showing. So I'm just going to go ahead and erase those. It's important, guys, if you are going to be erasing pencil lines, you want to make sure it's super dry before you do that. Because if you start trying to smear your pencil eraser around and there's any wet paint, it's just going to smear all the colors. So make sure it is super duper dry before you erase any pencil lines. Especially if you're going to wipe it off like I'm doing right now, you want to make sure it's really dry. So everyone's painting should be looking something like this. Even if your hearts aren't the same shape, that's okay. As far as the colors, we should have all of these colors now on our canvas before we start finishing our final details. Okay, cool. So now is really the fun part. So this is the part where you can decide what you want your hearts to say. So I thought about doing templates for you guys, but then I thought how fun it would be for everybody to pick their own words for it. So you can put your sweetheart's name or your kids' names or cute little phrases that would come on these conversation hearts like cutie pie, I love you. Um, you can really be creative, but I am going to show you some tips for how to keep your letters really straight and crisp when you're hand painting them like this. I'm going to grab a paper just to kind of show you you're welcome to practice too, like I'm about to do. <clears throat> um, sometimes I like to like pull up a typeface or something and look at a reference just to kind of get an idea of what I want my letter to look like, especially if I'm doing something a little bit funky and I'm trying to hand paint it myself. Um, also, I want to keep uh, remind you guys, absolutely use stencils. If you guys are stencil people, that would make this so easy. If you guys have an electronic cutting machine, you can cut out stencils that way or you can even cut out vinyl to put on here. That's really easy too. But if you're going to be like me and you're going to hand paint it because you're crazy, <laughs> I'm going to show you how I like to kind of practice my letters. Also a paint pen, guys. If you have a paint pen at home. That's great too. But if you don't and you're using red like me, which is going to be really cute, um, here's how I like to kind of uh, draw my letters out. So I kind of like to draw a couple lines. You have a ruler, even better. So I know the height of my letters. So kind of like remember back in elementary school, when we, you had that paper that was like, had the little dashes in the middle. So you knew just how you could make all of your letters. Kind of that idea, just to make sure everything up again, like our hearts, doesn't matter if it's perfect. If it looks uniform, it's gonna look really tidy when you're done. So this way you can kind of get that, get those letters just all the same height and similar widths. And that's really gonna help make your painting look neat. So you could do I and then love. And try your best to make sure that your letters are um, the same width. Like I said, you don't want some to be wide and some to be narrow. Because it's not the end of the world if it is. But you're going for that kind of like typed look like would be on a candy heart. This is just some tips for you. So a V. And then an E. And like I said, really just ensuring that all of your letters are the same height is going to take you a long way as far as keeping your letters nice and neat looking. So you can see it's not perfect, but the fact that it is all the same height is really gonna help make it look like it's almost perfect. 
Does that make sense, you guys? Yeah. So we can do. Awesome. <laughs> Good. So if you have a rule or two, that's great. But I'm again eyeballing it like usual. So then I did cutie pie. So just kind of want to make sure that your letters are all the same height and similar widths. And that's going to make it look really nice and neat when you're done. Okay, so now we kind of did a little bit of practice. We're gonna do the same thing on our actual painting. So if you have a straight edge and you wanna make your little template, you can totally, you can just use the edge of your paper even. So I can, I'll show you how I do that. I'll do a light line here and then a light line for where I want my letters to be under it. You can use a ruler, of course. I'll show you guys up closer when I'm finished here. I wanna do it too dark, so I'm gonna be able to erase it really easily. So you can see here, I did a couple rows of those pencil lines, one there and one there that I can write my word cutie pie. If you have something that's just one um, row of letters, then that's great too. You don't have to have the two separate lines. But now I'm just going to, you know, carefully sketch out my word just like we did on the practice paper. So I'm going to write cutie pie with my pencil. Trying to get it as centered as I can. Beauty pie. And again, as long as it's all fairly um, even as far as size and shape, your handwriting doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to look really nice and tidy no matter what. Now, do the same thing for the other one. I'll just do this my original design, my I Love You, in case anybody wanted to follow that one. But they're so like conversation hearts are so funny these days. I feel like they used to all be like, I love you, like that kind of thing. But now they're like, text me, call me maybe. Like, they, just, <laughs> they say the craziest stuff nowadays. So really be creative. Whatever is funny to you or whatever would be kind of cute in your house, maybe like an inside family joke for Valentine's Day. Just be creative with it. And keeping in mind too, when you space the back one, it might be a little bit get a little bit funny just because it's layered. So some of the letters might be, you know, hiding behind the purple one. Just kind of keep that in mind as you're kind of sketching it out. Like my eye is going to be a little covered up by the purple one. My Y is probably going to be kind of covered up. I love you. Okay, so I'll give everybody just a minute to catch up making their letters and being creative. And while everybody's catching up, I'm going to grab my red paint and my, and you wanna grab the smallest brown brush you have in your set or in your collection. Um, I here have a number four brown brush. So a liner brush to whatever is your smallest brush that you have or the one that looks most like this. You want a nice narrow brush for this. It's a brand new one. Okay, so whenever I'm doing really fine lines of paint, I typically do not like to water down my paint. I should start by saying that. Um, whenever you put water into your acrylic paints, it waters down the pigment. And just like we've been talking a lot about how our paint is opaque, it makes the paint less opaque, it makes it more transparent. So if you're kind of going for like a faux watercolor look, that could be really pretty. But if you're just trying to paint on a canvas like this and you really want that full body um, acrylic, you don't want to put any water in it because it's going to just kind of deconstruct the paint and make it really thin. So one exception I will say to that is when I'm doing really fine lines, I like to add just a little bit of water and that just kind of helps your brush to flow better. So it helps you not have to load your brushes often and it helps your brush to keep from dragging so you can get some of those really nice fine lines. So I'm going to put my brush in just a little bit of water, not a ton, and I'm going to kind of just start mixing it into the edge of my red puddle of paint here. I want to get it nice and smooth. I don't want it to be clumpy. I want it to be a nice, we're just thinning it down ever so slightly. And then I'm going to wipe off some of the excess onto my paper towel. 
and reload it. And then very carefully with the very tip of our brush, we're gonna start outlining our letters. So I'm just using the very tip of my brush. I'm not pressing down. If you press down, you're gonna get a thicker line. And if you put very little pressure on it, you'll get a nice thin line, which is kind of what we're going for, because that's kind of what those conversation hearts look like. So I'm just trying to be neat. Like I said, if you guys have a paint pen and you would rather use that, that'd be cute and much easier, for, especially if we're not used to a liner brush. If you guys have like a red Sharpie, that would even work really well over this acrylic paint. So you can make kind of a mixed media situation if you'd rather use something else and you have it by all means. Um, but really it's good to get some practical liner brush. It's not as hard as it looks. It's not as intimidating as it looks. Um, it just takes a little bit of practice to get those nice fine lines with just some acrylic paint. Just following my pencil lines as neatly as I can, picking up paint when I need it. Move on to my second one. And like I said, I'm not putting very much pressure. Just a little bit. And that's how you get those nice fine lines. If you press down, you'll get a thick line, which, you know, some, that's great. Sometimes we like that. That's why we, I love using a round brush because you can get such variation in your paint strokes. But for this particular occasion, I'm looking for those really thin lines. Okay, and then after, take your time doing that, guys. Don't feel like you need to rush because I did it quickly. Uh, I know it can take some practice if you're not used to a liner brush. If you are, you probably just finish it when I did. Um, once you have your letters outlined, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna outline all the edges of the hearts and the details and the dimension that we painted in to make it really pop. And that's gonna make it look really graphic-y and cartoony. And like I said, kind of reminds you like a pop art painting. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do that now just all the outlines of our candy hearts. If you feel like your paint is too translucent, if it feels like it's really thin, you can see everything beneath it, that means you probably put too much water. And so you wanna just add some more paint in there so there's less water in your mixture and it'll be better coverage again. Okay, so everybody just a minute to catch up with their red lines and their letters. And we're done with that. We have one more last tiny, tiny little detail. Um, and then our painting's done. I'm gonna show you how I did these cute little like like ping, like little like starboard <laughs> like, kind of like fun and cartoony. <laughs> That's it's what like I call when your them. teeth are know. shiny and like the commercial. Yeah, exactly, like an orbit gum commercial or something. Yes. <laughs> <That was funny. laughs> exactly. Okay, so I'll show you how I did that. So I'm going to grab um, one of my larger brushes. So this is my one inch flat. I'm going to grab this and pick up some regular wicker white. I have some in my palette. And you want a good bit of paint on there. You see, I have a good bit on there because I want to have a nice little pile. And the top right of each one of my little hearts, I'm going to dab it. 
So one there and one there. And then I'm gonna take a smaller brush that has a more narrow handle. So it's a little bit thinner. And I'm going to drag it through these paint piles and in, in, uh, up, down, left, and right. So up, down, left, and right. And that's how you get that cute little starbursty look Ooh. to add a little painting, <laughs> a little ting, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> really easy to do and really fun for like a cute little graphic painting like this. Um, and then guys, when you're done, you wanna make sure to sign your painting. Um, don't forget this class is being recorded. So in the next 24 to 48 hours, if you wanna go back and reference it, if you missed anything or you wanna repaint it or share it with friends, make sure to do that. Um, if you guys decide to post your paintings, make sure to hashtag plaid crafts and hashtag Maggie with Michaels because that's how me and Kira get to see all of your pretty paintings out there. Um, of course, we'll be back next Monday. We will be here for another paint night and we have lots of craft classes during the week. So if you guys want to join us for some of those, we'd love to see you. And I think that's it, right, Kira? Yeah, that's it. Thank you. It was a great one. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Thanks for joining. Yeah, bye, guys.